I was born in Florida in 1966 and grew up there on the East Coast in a small community an hour from Orlando, which is the nearest big town. And uh, the game almost didn't exist back then. There were no teams, there were no youth leagues, there were no goals or pitches you could go play on. Um, it wasn't until Pelé came to the New York Cosmos in the mid-70s that uh, there was a little bit of national attention on the game, and, and, and so youth leagues began to be formed, and, and my neighbor, who was a friend of mine my age, joined a team before I did, and uh, through him, I joined a team and started playing, and you know, for whatever reason, uh, everything about it appealed to me, and I became obsessed. And um, I started out as an outfield player, and it didn't take long uh, before I got tired of running around in the Florida heat, trying to win tackles and defend and uh, play balls, and, 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 and then I'd turn around and watch our goalie, whoever got stuck back there, just sort of disinterestedly put out a hand and a ball would go in and we would lose. And after the second or third time that happened, I said, I will handle that from now on. And so like everything I did as a kid, once I went in goal, I became obsessive about that. And uh, our local team in the North American Soccer League, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, um, their goalkeeper was an American named Winston DuBose. And Winston became my first idol. He was 22 or 23 at the time. He was a young goalkeeper. He was lean and, and long-limbed and very athletic and, and acrobatic. He had a lot of charisma and uh, I idolized him. And I began to, to copy him and model my game on his, write down all the little mannerisms, the, the way he uh, gestured to his defenders and set walls and, and the way he took his goal kicks and, and threw the ball and the way he wore his hair and um, his kit, everything about him. I mimicked down to a T, as you do when you're a young kid and you've got a hero. Um, one of the really exciting and memorable parts of my career was that I got to be Winston's teammate. Um, when I signed my first professional contract in 1988 as a 22-year-old with the Orlando Lions, they had also just signed Winston. And so we went into preseason camp together as the two goalkeepers and we went to Scotland um, for a tour and a round of exhibition games and um, I got to know him as a teammate and a friend in, in addition to a hero. Um, and he was aware that I looked up to him and he was very good about it. He was willing to be a role model, willing to take me under his wing, but he was tough about it and um, he made it pretty clear that I had a lot to learn. And as a quick example, our very first night in Scotland, I stayed up late and uh, with some of the other guys and got up late and uh, hustled down to the training pitch right, right before training. I wasn't late, but I just assumed there was no problem with sleeping right up until it was time to train. And Winston let me know pretty quickly that that wasn't the best way to, to handle things. The thing to do was to get to bed early and get a good night's sleep and then get up early enough that you had time to prepare your body to train which meant eating a decent breakfast and, and hydrating yourself and, and getting a good warm-up. And It sounds obvious now, but those were things I just didn't pay much attention to in 1988. And uh, one thing you have to remember is that we didn't have goalkeeper coaches back then. Uh, we didn't have coaching of any kind when I was a kid. And the only way you could learn was uh, by watching the pros. In addition to Winston, I was a huge fan of Ray Clements. And everyone knows Ray Clements. He's a legend of the game. Um, it wasn't easy for us to, to get uh, games from Europe at that time. It was, of course, before the internet. And there was cable TV, but there were no live games on cable TV from Europe, or very rarely. We would get the occasional FA Cup game or, or European Cup game. And one of the things I, I, I similar to, to Winston, Ray was lean. He was athletic and, and lean. He wasn't a great big muscular guy, and that was important because I wasn't. And as much as I admired a goalkeeper like, like Peter Shilton, he was much more strongly built than I knew I ever would be. And uh, same with, with guys like Joe Corrigan and, and Phil Parks. And so I tended to gravitate towards the leaner, the smaller goalkeepers like, like Winston, like Ray Clements, like Peter Bonetti, because I thought, well, this is the kind of physique I might end up with when I'm an adult. These are the guys I should be watching and emulating. Um, 
As I say, I was, I was fortunate enough to be a teammate of, of Winston's for a short period of time. He actually re-signed with the Rowdies after that preseason, so we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. Uh, and, you know, in those days before social media and, and mobile phones, we didn't really keep in touch. There really wasn't an easy way to do that. And so I only saw him two or three times over the next 10 or 15 years. I played until 1995 which was when I played my last game and went into coaching. Uh, but despite the fact that I didn't see him anymore, I, I really took to heart everything he had to say, and, and I would go through my training sessions and games as if he were watching. Uh, I was still trying to please him because, uh, you know, he was tough. He was, he was very kind and very generous and very giving, and he wanted me to, to learn and he wanted me to improve. But he... he was not one for casual flattery or, or cheap compliments. You had to earn it. Um, and so if you got a well done or a good save from Winston, you knew he meant it uh, because he didn't dish out those compliments lightly. And um, it was a great feeling when he did acknowledge that you'd done well like that. And so it was a feeling I chased the rest of the time I played in, in training and, and warming up and in match situations, I would think, you know, would Winston approve of this? Would he think I was doing well? Ray Clements, I was never lucky enough to meet. Maybe I will one day, that would be an absolute dream. I, I can imagine sitting and talking goalkeeping with somebody like Ray Clements, and I don't think there's enough hours in the day, to be honest, so. Um, I didn't have a career, anything like, uh, obviously Ray Clements, who's a legend of the game, or even Winston DeBose, who I know maybe not a lot of people know, but, uh, has a dozen or so caps for the U.S. national team and, and um, had some successful trials in England but didn't have a work permit so wasn't able to, to make anything more substantial happen. But uh, I did okay, you know, for a kid born in the mid-60s in, in small town Florida. Um, I had some good experiences and, and was able to, to do some things that I am still proud of today. And I, I really am, I feel very fortunate that the timing was right, that I I got to have a hero like Winston DeBose who then became a teammate and a friend. Not a lot of people have that experience. Um, I wish everybody could be that lucky.